Sometimes when you've been turning a while, you realize a handle on a particular tool just doesn't suit you anymore, and that's, that's me with these Robert Sorby thread chasers. Thread chasing handles are typically uh, five to six inches long. These are nine inches long, a little thicker than I want. I decided to re replace them with a hand, a more traditional handle that I like from, uh, based on this set I recently bought from uh, Crown, Crown Tools. Uh, you can make handles out of any number of, uh, of, of woods. I've turned replacement or, or new handles out of uh, cherry and maple, dogwood, Bradford pear, and I'm sure I'm sure a bunch a bunch of others. Uh, if you're turning handles, uh, exotics are very nice. They tend to be rather expensive. Uh, they work they work great if you're turning all handles and you've got little scraps like like this. In this case, uh, I did find a piece of, of wood. I actually started off with a, a piece of, of ash, but it turns out when I got to turning it, it had some bug holes in it uh, that just weren't going to make this suitable, so I'll throw that one away. Uh, so I found a piece of uh, some type of imported wood. I don't know what it is. Maybe Jatoba. Very dense, very hard, and it's probably not big enough for me to use for anything other than the tool handles. So this will make my two tool handles. So to remove the old handle, I just clamped it in a vise, uh, protecting the, the, the steel from scratches with a couple of scraps of wood. I'm going to just take this little little wrench here, and I'm just going to take a mallet and just smack it a few times. I'm a big believer in using storyboards for projects that you're going to repeat. Here's an example of a larger bowl gas and a smaller uh, spindle or, or other smaller tool uh, storybook and I've used these a lot in club workshops as well as working with new new wood turners here here in my shop so they've gotten a lot of use. This particular one uh, since I'm going to make it uh, possibly six different handles I think it's worth my time and effort to go ahead and make a storyboard. So I'm simply going to put this down just about center it, take a pencil and just kind of sketch the outside I can refine it a little bit before I trans transfer it to a, to a board. And that gets me pretty close. I think I'm going to go ahead and cut this out, transfer this to something a little more permanent. And I think that's, that's probably pretty close. The, the ferrule is going to be, be based on how big the ferrule actually is. Okay. I think I'll go ahead and use this. I'm just going to put this on. Okay, I've put this blank between centers. We're just going to round it, speed up, maybe close to 2,000. Anchor the tool, wide the down, we'll wait for the cut. to do but meanwhile I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a tenon on here so it'll fit my smaller chuck. If I wait too long it won't fit. And there we go. Now I'll go ahead and chuck it up. So now I'm going to finish turning it around. Next, I'm going to take what will be the ferrule and go ahead and leave it about maybe a sixteenth of an inch proud, mark it, and then we're going to go ahead and take it down to size the ferrule before we do anything else. Let's talk about ferrules a little bit. Let me show a picture of some ferrules. You can make ferrules out of out of copper couplings. You can make them out of uh, brass fittings. If you change out a, a large fixture in your kitchen, you'll have more brass than you know what to do with. Uh, a little steel uh, piece of steel pipe. You can use almost anything. The key is you want to have, ideally you want to have a quarter inch of wood between the edge of the ferrule and the, uh, and the tool. I like to use plumbing fi uh, fixtures. Um, I got this from replacing a fixture in the, in the bathroom and 
We're going to turn at about 600 RPM using this uh, quarter inch high speed steel bit that's been ground to similar to a sharpening a, uh, a hollowing bit. And just light cuts. Don't cut this brass without any problem. Most of those threads down, I'll continue to cut it down a little bit more. I sanded 240, 320, 400. Uh, I put a little uh, micro fine honing compound on it and, and polished it with a, with a 500 grit, and it just uh, shines up like a new penny. I rounded over the front a little bit. Now I'm ready to part off a piece. And we're going to go ahead and Size his calipers to fit the ferrule. And maybe add just a smidge for fine tuning. I'm looking for a relative reference, okay. Yes. I'm going to use this as the threaded portion here for a relative reference. We're just going to go ahead and take that down. I'm going to use my beating and parting tool. step. Okay, so I'll be able to hammer that on. I don't, I think I'm going to have a, a close enough of mechanical fit that I don't need to worry about glue. So I'm going to go ahead and take the other ferrule and use that to actually drive this on. I'm just under here for my mallet. And I've got a nice, nice fit there. Next, I'm going to take the tool and using a drill gauge, I just see which, which one of these is the best fit. It's about 3 8, so I want something just a hair smaller than that. So I've got a smaller drill bit, and I'll go ahead and drill that hole. It helps to drill a starter hole with a starter uh, drill bit used uh, primarily in machining, but it will give you a nice start so the regular drill bit is less likely to wander. I like to put this bit on before I put this on so I can make sure that it's, it's centered. Put it on the tail stock. I'm going to bring it back to one inch. I'm going to measure how long this is. I believe it's just a bit over inch and five, five eighths. So I'm going to go ahead and drill based on the markings here, an inch and five eighths. And I'm going to back this off just a little bit. I'll slow the blade down just a little bit. And just slowly find its way. Now, this piece is sticking out too long to turn unsupported, so I'm going to use my uh, cone center, since I've got a hole drilled, and it will support it just fine. Now we're going to bring up our storyboard. So I take our storyboard, here's the first feature. 
There's the second feature. There's the lowest point. I'm going to take this down to 30 millimeters based on the storyboard. It's a bead right there in the center. I can fine tune that. And then I have a tiny little fillet on each side that I'm going to take down a little bit. I'm going to do that with my uh, eighth inch because that fillet is right at an eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to take that down on each side. and just clean up, clean up that beard. sand it up to uh, 400 grit. Uh, I haven't decided whether I will actually put a finish, if so I'll use Minwax Antique Oil, or whether I'll just use this sanding abrasive and leave it kind of a waxed, waxed finish, but in any case this is going to make it smooth, smooth as can be. I think I finally figured out what kind of wood this is. I thought it was a harder wood, but I think it's uh, Spanish cedar which can hold detail very well, and it's fairly light wood, but I think it's going to be just fine for, for these handles. Now all i got to do is part it off. And now we'll go ahead and see about parting it off. I think I might switch to a skew. I think I can get a nice clean, clean cut. Try to cut this off. Let's go ahead and use a flush cut saw. 
and then I'll have to chase it across the floor. Here's the one I'm modeling it, modeling it after, very close. I'm going to go ahead and tap the handle in with the uh, tool on a piece of leather so it won't damage the teeth, although it's high speed steel. I'd rather do it this way. Uh oh. Let's get this thing hammered on there straight. That's on there, no epoxy. Uh, I think I'm going to be very happy with this new handle. And I'd have to say it's going to be a huge improvement over the original Robert Sorby, which is too long. You could do this on a drill press, but I just find this works uh, easier for me. You guys know how much I'd lo I love to teach or I wouldn't be making these videos. So I, I do teach lessons in my shop. If you live in the Atlanta area, you got relatives in the Atlanta area, or you just, you're just traveling through, uh, check it out. Details on my, my webpage.